Hey, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and chances are you're either building, have built, or plan to build another computer in the future, and you're not quite too sure on what size power supply to use. So in order to try and arm you with the information you need when choosing the right power supply, today we're going to take a look at how much wattage your system really uses under the different types of tasks that you can possibly throw at it, and hopefully give you the information it takes to choose the right power supply. Now if you take a look behind me, you see I've got my watt meter, it's hooked up only to my tower, so we are only measuring wattage and amp that come directly from the tower and anything within it plugged in directly to the wall. So the only readings we're going to get are the tower and the tower only. And I'm using a webcam here to capture the wattage and you can see here this is what the webcam is capturing. It's kind of uh, a bit light so I'm just going to use this, make some shade. And as you can see, there is the watt meter and we'll put that up on the screen and we'll get some cool little dynamic view stuff going and as I'm waving my arms around like crazy. Now a lot of new builders tend to really get overzealous when it comes to their power supply and tend to get one that's actually too big. It is possible to have too big of a power supply. It's not like other things in life where there's, you know, the bigger the better. A power supply. If too big, never reads its full efficiency state, which means that you kind of get fluctuations in some of the power delivery. And at the same time, you don't want to undersize your power supply because you don't want to hit, hit its maximum output because then you're gonna get blue screens and shutdowns and other not so good stuff. Now I just wanna briefly touch on what the 80 plus rating means. I'm not gonna go into depth on it. I'm just gonna let you know that the reason why most builders only recommend 80 plus and above when it 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium power supplies is because what that's saying is that at 100% load of the power supply unit, you're getting at least 80% of that load turned into energy. So what that means is on a thousand watt power supply, you're getting at least 800 watts of the rated power to that system. So it's very important that you actually size your power supply appropriately. We're gonna go ahead and look at the parts that are being used in my system. My system has a lot of peripherals in it, which can use and burn up a lot of power other than the processor and the motherboard. I am using a 3770K overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. I am using a GTX 680 that's overclocked to 1250 megahertz. I do have eight gigabytes, two DIMMs of 1866 RAM that's overclocked to 2100. I do have a water cooling loop in here that's using an MCP655 variable speed pump set on speed three. I have 11, 11, right, one, two, three, 12 Corsair fans in this system. I have nine 120 millimeter fans and three 140 millimeter fans. So there's a lot more fans in this system than the average builder would use. And it's one of those things that people tend to throw out there is, oh, if you're gonna use a lot of fans, you gotta have a big power supply. And we're gonna debunk that myth right here in this video. And my motherboard is an ASRock Z77 OC formula. And I do have two LED light strips in this, all crammed into a 900D case. And the power supply that we're using for this system is the Corsair AX750. It's a 750 watt gold rated power supply. So let's go ahead and run this thing through some tests and let's see just how much wattage we're actually using. Okay guys, we're back. We're taking a look at my desktop. And as you can see, we're idling right around the 150 watt mark, uh, a little bit below that high 140s and we jump up into the 150s a little bit. It tends to jump a little bit when you move your mouse because believe it or not, moving your mouse does use your CPU. Let's go and take a look at Intel Burn Test. It's a program I use to stress the CPU when I test overclocks. We'll go ahead and uh, go from standard to maximum. So we'll do maximum stress on the CPU just to see what happens with the wattage. Now, as you can see here, it jumped right up to about 212 watts, 210. Uh, we're not going to really let this run very long because it's not going to get any more strenuous than it already is. In fact, if it looks like it's doing anything, it looks like it's dropping a little bit. So just a CPU stress test, 100% usage on the CPU. We're looking at about 210 to 215 watts. We'll go ahead and open up uh, Valley Benchmark, which is just a GPU stressor. It puts the GPU at 100%. And as you can see, we're sitting just over 300 watts. Dropping down as low as 280, but we are looking uh, right around 300 is the, the sweet spot. I saw 305, I think, for a second there. 304, 301. And of course, it's gonna depend on the load on the CPU, or the, the GPU and what it's actually doing, what kind of you know polygons it's rendering and this and that. 
Now the CPU load though to keep in mind is only sitting at 11 percent, uh, 16 percent, 14 percent. It's just it's really really low. So what happens now when you take both CPU and GPU and you stress them at the same time? Let's go ahead and find out together. Okay, now since we know that Valley Benchmark on its own doesn't stress the entire system enough because the CPU is not really used in the equation, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and run Valley Benchmark in windowed mode and we're putting all the settings on max. It's ultra, we've got 8x anti-aliasing, it's at 1080p. And this is going to be a pretty decent stress for the GTX 680. And what we're going to do while this is running is we're going to go ahead and bring up Cinebench to use the CPU at the same time. So instead of being a stress test on the CPU, it is going to be a load. So we're going to have a GPU load and a CPU load. And as you can see right now, before I start Cinebench, we're at 290 watts all the way down to the high 270, low 280 watts mark just with that. But now once we hit run CPU on the Cinebench, we are sitting right around 350 watts. And if we look at the GPU usage on here, somewhere. Can't even bring it up because it's being so stressed. But based on the frame rates that we are getting here uh, on my benchmark for the GPU, we are definitely running. It's running at 1250 megahertz. So we are stressing the system right now as hard as it possibly can. And we're sitting right around 365 watts or so. Okay, so now Cinebench is done and we drop down below 300 again. Let's go ahead and run Cinebench one more time just to put that stress on and check and see if we get the same kind of results here. The GPU is currently sitting at 99% usage and Cinebench is currently running at 340, or not Cinebench, but Cinebench is running and we're sitting right about 345 to 350 watts. So we'll go ahead and shut off all this annoying stuff here. There's a couple of interesting things that we just learned. And we'll go ahead and talk about that now in the conclusion once I can get all this crap turned off. Actually, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and see realistically what Battlefield 3 is using wattage-wise. Okay, so Battlefield's currently running. We're in the game here. And as you can see, we're only using a little over 300 watts. What's interesting about this is the fact that our graphics card is overclocked. So it's definitely putting us as much usage as it can to that graphics card. Now the voltage is locked at 1.1 volts on the graphics so it's not anything entirely major but you can see wattage wise here with a 3770K and a GTX 680 and water cooling and 12 fans and an SSD, two hard drives, LED strips, uh, the overclocked on everything. We're only using a little over 300 watts while gaming. Okay guys so what have we learned today besides the fact that Jay has a big ass zit on his face? Well, we learned that for the most part, a lot of people really tend to oversize their power supply units based on their needs. Now, it's one thing to be future-proof and have room to add a second graphics card or even a third graphics card if that's the route you want to take. You just have to know that in the meantime, the less power you use of the maximum output of your power supply is just wasted money and wasted energy going into that power supply that's turning in to nothing. A power supply wants to use as much energy and put out as much energy as it possibly can. That is what it's designed to do. So the lower amount of energy you use in your power supply, the less efficient it's going to be. You're gonna pay more to use that power supply really to do not what it's designed to do. I think most people can get away with about a 600 to a 650 watt power supply and still have room in the future as hardware progresses and needs more energy. Now what's interesting is most manufacturers when it comes to graphics cards and CPUs are really working on reducing the amount of power consumption in their power supply. This also tells me that my 750 watt is not being used nearly as much as I thought it was. I had been holding off going with a second 680 in my system because I didn't believe that my 750 was enough output and had enough headroom left in it to add a second graphics card. But as you saw, we were only using about 150 watts extra power with the graphics card under load. So that tells me I'm going to probably end up throwing a second 680 in this system somewhere in the near future. 
Now, if you have any questions about power supplies or what the 80 plus rating means or any of that, I plan on doing a more all-inclusive video with the when it comes to power supplies. But before that, I thought it was important to show you what it really looks like and how much power you're really truly using in your system. And I think you may be surprised that even with all the extra peripherals in my system, we're using a lot less power than even I thought we were using. I hadn't done this test until now. I shocked myself even. I thought I was using somewhere over 500 watts. Not even close. All right, guys, it's been Jay's Two Cents. If you like this video, you know what to do. Share it with someone you think can learn from this information. If you're looking on building your own computer, this will help you in the future. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, see you in my next video.